I'm Jason Peacock. Today we're looking at Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the board game by Thomas Gofton. It's a game for one to six players. It's cooperative. Let me show you how it plays and then we'll come back up and I'll tell you what I think. Okay, so this is a game of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. All set up. First thing you're gonna do is, depending on the number of players, you're gonna pick a character from the franchise. They've got all the main ones there, Buffy and Giles and Angel, Rupert, Spike. You can play one character or up to six. You can just play with one, but it's recommended you just play solo with two separate characters. You're also gonna pick a big bad one of the looming threats that you have to deal with. They're all gonna have like an overarching effect on the game. Once you defeat three monsters of the week, these guys get revealed. There's two main mechanics in the game. Depending on who you pick, they're gonna have their starting location. So the characters have four actions that they're all gonna use every round, and then the monsters are gonna go. They've also got one special action here which uh, lets you do your special power or one of the ba basic actions. So I would flip this over, moving is an action, so that would be something I can do. Another thing I can do is use the ability at that location. I'm at the uh, UC Sunnydale, so I can draw three items from the item deck. There's seven different types of items. Uh, spikes and magic items, weapons for fighting demons, holy water, and tomes. Uh, you might want to fight a vampire at your place. If you do, you just flip it over and a vampire would be stunned, and then it wouldn't be able to attack anyone at the end of the round. Uh, there's different weapons, like if I had a spike, I can use a fight action and completely kill a vampire, or I can remove my spike and just eliminate that vampire from the game. So everyone's moving around Sunnyvale, and they're trying to collect items to fight the Monsters of the Week, and the big bad. The monsters of the week all come from this deck here. There's a deck of monsters of the week and you're generally gonna see three every game unless you choose to play with more. They're all gonna have uh, something uh, where they start and an ability they do when they're in play. The second major mechanic of the game other than moving around and fighting is called an event check. Now if I want to fight one of the monsters of the week I have to have these two items here, a garlic and a steak, and then I flip an event card. If I get a symbol that matches one of the ones I need on the bottom, he's defeated, I win. Um, if I didn't draw the right card, the action's wasted unless I want to permanently remove one of my action tokens from the game. Even if you fail, your items are gone anyway. So every time you defeat a monster of the week, this uh, clue token gets left behind uh, wherever that monster started. And going to that location and picking up a clue token will reveal that particular Big Bad's one of his plot cards. There's a deck of cards and you're going to see three of those a game. The Big Bad basically functions as a monster of the week. You've got to defeat it three times. And then the heroes win. Monster of the week um, gets defeated similar to the Big Bad's. However, you don't have the option of removing an action token from the game if you fail to draw the right card from the event deck. So uh, if I was playing with the first evil here, and I would, this is what it's gonna do every round. It's gonna add a vampire to this location. I need to have a book and a magic. And then when I attempt to defeat this evil, I flip the event card, I have to have one of these matching tokens. So game proceeds with everyone just kind of running around, trying to pick up the items, hoping they flip the right card to fight a, um, uh, the monster of the week or the big bad. Now, there's also townies that are running around town that have to be protected. Because after all the players spend all of their action tokens, the monsters are going to go. Starting with the big bad, if he's in play yet. He doesn't come into play until the third monster of the week is defeated. Then the big bad will go and these guys, if they're in a space of the townie, they'll just eat that townie. And the townie gets added to the apocalypse track. Once that thing fills up, the players lose. If there's a character in a location, the character is going to get hit. And it's very similar, but on the reverse side of the townie token is a wound. It has the same effect, but wounds can be healed. There's also artifact cards. These can be found. These are a little more powerful. Um, I played a game where 
however many townies were on the apocalypse track, that's how many monsters all over the town you got to kill. So I'd kill like five or six monsters, totally cleared out the town. It was fun to use. These special action tokens I was talking about, every time a character flips those, you have to flip a event card. But this time you're not worrying about the symbol on the bottom. You're going to add a vampire somewhere or a demon. And then you're going to add a townie somewhere generally. And then there's going to be something that happens. Place this card beside the game round until the end of the round. Summer's residence cannot be activated. That's Buffy's house. She lets you remove two wounds off the apocalypse track. So if that event card came up, you wouldn't be able to do that. So uh, that's the game in a nutshell. As far as what the places do, they're not that exciting. Um, they all allow you to take two of each of the seven different items in the deck. So each lo uh, there's a location for all of that stuff. You can't use the location if there's bad guys in your zone. You want to use items to manipulate the board, move vampires around, or, or just straight up defeat them with stakes. But you also can't let the townies get over run as well so there's a little bit of attention you're paying to the monsters popping up but typically i'm just gathering what i need to take another stab at the big bad or the monster of the week i don't have a lot of other things to say about the game that's pretty much how it goes let's get back for my final thoughts all right so yay buffy the vampire slayer um as far as am i a fan of of uh of the canon to begin with and I remember watching this show back when it was on, and I was surprised how much I liked some of the episodes. I never watched it all the way through, but I always kind of meant to. So, being on Netflix, I I watched the first half a dozen to get into the show, in preparation for this review. And I don't think it matters how big of a fan you are of this, this canon, you're probably not going to enjoy this game. So reading the rule book, at first I thought, well, that's interesting, going around to different parts of Sunnyvale, using locations, fighting off demons and vampires to save townies. Uh, it turns out that the places you're going to are really uninteresting. You're either just grabbing items from the deck that you need to fight off a big bad or a monster of the week. Um, and then there's some that, you know, there's one that lets you heal, a couple off the apocalypse track, one that lets you just draw three item cards from the deck. So rather than getting the two you want, you can take a random three. It all amounts to a pretty tedious and uninteresting, boring experience without very many interesting decisions. I never found myself um, scrambling around to put out fires while we were fighting off the, the Monster of the Week or the Big Bad. The game's pretty much amounted to, oh, we need a holy water and a book to fight the Big Bad guy? Okay, I'll go to the place that gives me a holy water, I'll go to the place that gives me a book, and then I'll flip an event card and hope it's the symbol I need to fight this guy. You can't really say that it's the same as rolling a dice, because and if, if you were just rolling one dice, it would suck just as much. But there's no way to modify. There's no buffs that are, you know, draw two from the deck and pick one. There's nothing to make your odds any better that I came across. The game is, it just feels real grindy. It's like, all right, I got my book and I got my tome. I'm going to fight the monster of the week. Oh, I didn't draw a symbol I needed. I guess I'll go find another book and a tome and I'll try it all over again. There's a little bit in there where you're um, you're fighting off the monsters and demons, you're trying to save the townies, and you might want to get a better score than just not filling up your track. Yeah, you kind of got your rating, right? If there's only one spot left, you're just a townie. If you only have a few symbols on the track, then you're a, a boss or whatever it's whatever they call you, a slayer. So I never want to play this game again. Get this thing away from me. I don't like to say that a game sucks. I prefer to say, you know, it wasn't for me or I didn't like it. But I feel comfortable saying this game sucks. This is like the adult version of Shoots and Ladders. Just on a linear course. Uh, it just feels like uh, they threw something together. Maybe they started off with a good idea. But in the end, they just produced... A lackluster, uninteresting design. So, do I recommend this? No. 
If you're a diehard fan of Buffy and you don't care if the game sucks, this game might just be for you. So, that's my thoughts on this game. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Peacock. You can check me out right here on uh, the Twitter if you want. And uh, thanks for watching. Thank you.